I'm an artist that works predominantly with clay, with ceramics, and those have varying different forms or needs or requirements. I've worked on mainly very large scale installations over the last 10 years, and uh, they happen in many varying sites from uh, the Eden Project through to the BNA, the Victoria and Albert Museum, through to uh, sites internationally, Nelson Atkins. So a lot of museum works looking at the interpretation of ceramics, the boundaries of ceramics, and uh, quite a lot of historical. I'm interested in the historical and clay. Um, I was invited by the Foundling Museum to come and view the museum and have a look at the space. So the commission was an invitation from the museum as a kind of open starting point of come and have a look at our museum and see if it had any potential that I can engage with. I think coming to the museum is a completely overwhelming event. It's really hard to uh, take it apart, I think. Maybe it's because I've spent a lot of time here now, but the, the content of the museum is so ginormous. You know, it's a, we could say it's a number of rooms, but actually the history, as soon as you start acknowledging it, becomes vast. But the, uh, I suppose the particular part was the human life within the hospital. I was very, very interested in the human content, not so much the objects and the relics, but what they laid kind of the traces of, and I think that was the human. You would have thought that after 15 years of practice that multi-piece large-scale installations would be water off a duck's back to me, but of course the challenges are in 1,620 things that have uh, an identical partner in production, also finding the perfect cup, because the second perfect cup wouldn't do, the perfect cup that could help navigate some of the dialogues that I wanted to explore. So not the highly refined, not the terribly basic. And some of those things came from being allowed to go into the archives. So the big challenges were what hopefully the ceramics have allowed me to do which is to find the right connections and points of engagement. Developing the concept for exchange was this kind of tug of war, a kind of relationship with the content of the museum, with the building, with the site, with my, my role within that as the artist, where, where could an artist interject into this huge, huge, huge amount of uh, content. So I think exchange really happened at that point of human engagement with what happened between the children, the mothers, the foundling families, this whole, whole point of exchange. And I think it left me lots of questions which hopefully remain in the artwork that I've made, which is questions about what do we enter into when we decide that an exchange is something we're going to do. I think that the visitor coming to see Exchange has been through quite a lot of journey within this building. I think the building, the Foundling Museum, has so much content. This is another layer of content that we're temporarily bringing here. And it depends how the visitors reacted to the rest of the museum, and I believe that that can be vastly varying for different individuals. So I think that when they come to the basement, if they don't start at the basement, then it's influenced by what they've experienced already so far in the building. So I think exchange will be the content that they kind of bring with them from the building. I don't know exactly what that might be. When the visitor arrives in the space, they will be confronted by a huge visual quagmire of repetition. And if they have been given permission to pick up a cup, 
then depending when they come in to the museum, whether it's early in the three months of exhibition or whether it's late in the three months of exhibition, they will either see lots of sources laid bare which have uh, the inscription of uh, requests that they might do if they want to take a cup. But if they've been uh, given permission to take a cup, they can pick up a cup and on the base of that cup is a request for them to undertake a positive action. And uh, it's only when they pick up that cup, they find out what that is and they only get to pick up one cup. So they look at the base of that cup and they figure out whether they can do it or not. And if they think they can do it, they can keep the cup. The saucer remains because all the saucers remain as a trace of what other people have agreed to. And so when they take the cup, they're independent, the cup's independent, and they can choose when they do that positive action. If they want to, they can tell us that they've done it, but they don't have to. So it becomes a very private negotiation, and I think it's that point of picking the cup, looking at that request is uh, hopefully, for me, the most exciting moment of them asking, can I do it, can I do it, can I do it? Maybe they can, maybe they can't. Maybe they take the cup anyway. The, the work exchange is alive. It's changing. It's moving. So every day when the cups are lifted and things are agreed to, the exchanges start to be considered. The exchanges happen. That's when the work is kind of the initiation. But then the ripple of that is that the uh, positive actions are undertaken, they're done. There are two people, maybe more involved in that process. And then probably from that process, it's a dialogue. Somebody will tell somebody else that they've done it. So exchange becomes this ongoing process. So I think that the, the hopes for exchange is the continuation of the work beyond the catalyst. What we see here in the gallery is only a catalyst the actions, the human part of this, are the most significant. I hope the legacy of exchange will be the, the triggering, the triggering of the dialogues, the triggering of the reconsideration or recontextualization of what the Foundling Hospital did, what the Fam Foundling Museum continues to do, what Coram does. So in a way, I hope it's a contextual piece for us to be able to understand all things are possible still.